Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone, and I'm super excited about today's video because I get to share a very special guest with you. So I was fortunate enough to actually spend some time with those of you that watched RuPaul's Drag Race know, Thorgy Thor, she was from this season. Um, so I actually got to hang out with her. She was here at a local bar, Badlands. Thank you so much for setting this up. And we sat down and we actually got to talk. We got to talk about food, we got to talk about like what it was like being on Drag Race and just sort of traveling and everything from eating bugs to drinking whiskey. It's just a really fun interview. So check it out. I think you're going to like it. Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone and I'm here today at Backstage in Badlands where I have Thorgy Thor. Hi. You probably know from Drag Race. Woo! <laughs> How's it going? It's very, very good. Thank you so much for I'm having me. I'm in such a good mood. It's a pleasure to sit down with you. Awesome, awesome. So let's talk about what this week has been like. So okay. it's been a rough week, you know. You were eliminated. Yeah. We lost Prince. We're, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. So apparently this there's like a hashtag justice for Thorgy going around. Awesome. We'll that's see. like tweet. That's like the Twitter thing going on. I'm like, all right. It was shocking. I shared it a couple of times. <laughs> it was really shocking. Very shocking. I, I thought you were going to be, you know, final three. Like it just seemed like that was a no brainer. You know what was most shocking for me about it was that I knew I was going to have to watch this live with people because I do a viewing party in Brooklyn every single week. Nice. And I made sure of it. And I was like, and since day one when I got back on the show, they were like, everyone told me, they're like, you're going to win. Oh, you're top three. If you're not top three, I'm going to kill myself. And I'm just like, and I heard this a lot. So this and I was like, oh, people are like rooting for me. Like, this is a thing. Like, and I knew I got eliminated six, but I had to keep my mouth shut. So I actually watched it in front of everyone in Brooklyn. And it was just this roar of like, wow. And I'm like, listen, I had a freaking blast. I, I did a good job. I had sisters for life and like it's just a good show to be part of so i'm not sour about it so walking out of that experience now that like you i imagine there's a kind of a cathartic part too that now that you can say it right like oh the really like this, happened, you know like keep there really is no more secrets i'm like oh so what's next for you what are you doing next um i have a lot of things planned well you know everyone knows like once you're on drag race every all the clubs around the the states they want to eat you up and people well it's funny because yeah. i'm from new york but i've never had the chance to like literally be in sacramento before so like, we'll fly up and we'll come do it. I'm like, great, you know? So it's great to really meet all the local queens and all the shows and like really create like this really cool stuff. And um, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just like kind of touring all these clubs and doing little things. But I'm also preparing at the same time like a string show. You know, my violinist feels yes, jealous. Yes. And I own my own company for years, for nice. events. And I've played for many orchestras, but I've always wanted to do it in drag. So I want to conduct in drag and, and conduct with orchestra. And have like a 40 to 80 piece orchestra at, you know, La Poussin Rouge in Manhattan or, you know, like a loft space in Brooklyn and then possibly tour with it. That's very fun. Yeah, I think that would be kind of a cool thing to like meld like drag culture and, and like a younger demographic with like classical music. Yeah. And make it cool so. again. Yeah. Because definitely. there's so many cool musicians that I know, but it's kind of like this feel where like, I don't know, it's not cool anymore for some reason. I'm like, it is the coolest thing. Like, music is so cool. Yeah. That, so, it's my goal. So, if someone wanted to find out where to, like, catch that performance when it comes, where should we go to? That's funny. See, we're not even at that stage it's right not now. I'm actually stage. talking to musicians that I know. I'm trying to put together an orchestra. Okay. But I am going to have a casting call. Nice. I'm going to have, like, an, an open audition. Okay. So, bring your character. <laughs> like, I want an orchestra full of characters that can also play. That I mean, They have to play really, like, they have to be players, you know? Because you've been studying, you've studied for a long time. Absolutely, right? yes. And what are all the instruments that you play? I play violin, viola, cello. Okay. I play a little piano, but I'm mainly a violin, viola, cellist. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So speaking of Brooklyn, now that you've been kind of touring and like seeing all these other cities, yeah. what's the Brooklyn drag scene like compared to other places? So yeah, I walked in here, we're in the dressing room here in Sacramento. I walked in, I was like, you guys have no idea what it's like in Brooklyn. Even in Manhattan. You're lucky if you have a dressing room. If, if you show you shit on the back, like everything you bring in is like what you watch the whole night or get it stolen. I walk in here, this is an incredible, incredible dressing room, like lights and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, it's really incredible. Uh, but Brooklyn is awesome. It's really sloppy and cool. I'm like, we don't, we don't care so much about talking shit about other people, but rather really embracing each other as a community of artists. You know, we're all getting paid twenty five dollars to show up every week with a new look and a new number, and we just really love it. We we all sit in the front row and cheers. You know, somebody's in full flops, we're like, yeah, it's worth it. Like it's it's about making fun of each other in a way. Right. It's part of the culture there, which makes the performance aspect really fun. So it's for everybody. That's awesome. Yeah. When uh, so in Brooklyn, you know. I have this cooking channel, so we have to talk a little bit about oh, yeah. Um, 
where do people, where do you go to eat? What's your favorite places to eat? Oh my god. Well, I live in Greenpoint. Okay. And it's right above Williamsburg. And Greenpoint is like up and coming with all this. Every day there's like this new cafe and this new like Brazilian restaurant. So I eat like this uh, Ethiopian restaurant. I, I eat everything. <laughs> and you're like a veggie. I'm vegetarian, but I'm not offended. Okay, so you eat everything. Like, it's like I would eat cockroaches and bugs and slugs. And well, like, I would eat very like, environmentally friendly to yeah. you, so, you know. And may I share something? I don't talk about this a lot. I really, really, really want to be on Survivor. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. Look, I'm not, I really want to be on Survivor. Like, it it's going to be. Time. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but like, I have dreadlocks, really long dreadlocks. I would shave it off for the show. Uh, and, like, go. I just love the idea of like being so physically demanding and like eating like birds from the sand. And, like, <laughs> it's like I love that, like how primal that is. So. Coming up with your recipe is going to be a challenge. I know. Right? I was like, I'm giving you a lot of like crazy ideas. <laughs> When, so, we know what you like to eat. What do you like to drink? What's, what's your Oh, drink? I'm a whiskey and beer drinker. Okay. Make Together snark. or, you know, something? Yes, actually, I, when I have a glass of whiskey, I'll wait until I'm like, I need to be like a pairing. <laughs> it's, 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 and it's also, it's like the Brooklyn staple. Like, everyone in Brooklyn is like, whiskey and beer. And there's always like some beer, whiskey special, like at every bar. Awesome. Yeah, so. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. It's my pleasure. Yeah, um, you know, if people want to get, what's your, what? It's your website. It's just thorgy.com, T H O R G Y. That's where they can find out when you do get your cast together for the Of Lord course. Christmas. And like my Facebook is just Thorgy, so I'm the only Thorgy Thor, at Thorgy Thor on Twitter and Instagram. And cool, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, well I'm super excited. Oh, what a pleasure to <laughs> hang out with you. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, cool. Okay, seriously, isn't she just the greatest? The thing that I love about Thorgy, I mean, she was one of my favorites to watch this season on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, but she's just kind of this combination of like Carol Burnett or Lucille Ball. She's just super fun. So I really wanted to do a recipe that kind of highlights her personality and the things that she liked, which is like beer and whiskey, which my kind of gal, by the way. So I'm gonna make this delicious, boozy root beer float. I'm gonna make a caramel whiskey um, I'm gonna make some candied pecans, we're gonna hack some vanilla ice cream, and we're gonna make a root beer float using some boozy root beer. It's gonna be super freaking good. I think Thorgy would like it, and I think you will too. So let's get to making it, shall we? Okay, so for this recipe, you're gonna need some cloves. We're gonna use some freshly ground nutmeg and some ground cinnamon. We're also, of course, we're candying pecans, so we need our pecans. And we have some vanilla extract, some brown sugar, and some butter. So let's get started. Let's turn this baby on. Melt our butter. Add in the little extract. Spices. It's looking pretty smooth there, so now we're add in our pecans. And then we want to transfer these to like a baking sheet to kind of let them cool. Okay, so to make the caramel part of this recipe, we're gonna need some butter, some cream, a little bit of salt, some brown sugar, vanilla extract, and of course, because Thorgy loves whiskey, we got some, we got some whiskey here. So let's go ahead and make it. Start off by adding our butter. Add in our cream. And our brown sugar. As always, I'll put the full ingredient list and instructions in the show notes so you can just sit back and watch. We want to bring this to a boil for about five minutes. I'm going to add in a pinch of salt, our whiskey and two tablespoons of vanilla extract. Mix that together. And remove it from the heat. Okay, so yeah, we've made our whiskey caramel and we have our candied pecans here. So now we're gonna make the caramel pecan ice cream. We're gonna take this basic vanilla ice cream, scoop it out here and just scoop that into this dish. And then we're just gonna put some of the nuts in there, some of the caramel sauce, and then do it all over again. I'll put one more 
small layer on top. Okay, let me put this in the freezer. Now that our hacked ice cream has firmed up in the freezer, we're gonna go ahead and scoop it out and make our root beer float. Now just add in our boozy root beer. Okay, so there we have it. We have our boozy root beer. We have our whiskey caramel ice cream that we made. Totally delicious. This one's for you, Thorgy. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, by the way, if you wanna check out more interviews like this, we have Bianca Del Rio, also from RuPaul's Drag Race. We have Larry Smith from Orange is the New Black and so many other ones. So be sure to check out the interview series on my channel. And if there's someone that you wanna see, let me know in the comment field. Talk to you guys soon. So good.